Hello there everyone, it's UXW Bill here once again, and I've got kind of a funny story for you. Here's a machine that I've been looking to find for quite a while. This is a machine that I actually picked up from work a couple of years ago, actually more than a couple of years ago, it's going on seven years ago, and I presumed that it might have been lost in the Great Basement Flood of 2004. But I picked this thing up from work, my boss told me that I could have it, and so I took it home and I wiped the hard drive and I reloaded all the system software on it. It's running Macintosh OS 7.6, which is really not ideal for a machine this old, but it was what I happened to have handy and I never have gone back and put something perhaps a little more period correct or fitting on it. Kind of a funny story here. I thought this machine was lost. I'd looked all over the place for it. I thought it might be in the Roach Palace. I thought it might be up here in my room somewhere. And as I exhausted more and more places, I began to fear that it might have been lost in the Great Basement Flood of 2004, as so many of my wonderful antique computers were. I saved as many as I could, but I could not save them all. And I feared this machine had been lost because I couldn't find it anywhere. Well, last night, prior to my blog TV show, before I had any knowledge that Apple co-founder and uh, CEO Steve Jobs had in fact passed away, I found this machine sitting in a tote outside of my bedroom buried under a bunch of other stuff because I was having a great deal of trouble getting the TV encoder output on my um, video, com my Dimension 4550, the computer that I used to run the Rigs of Rods video on the blog TV show last night. I was having a devil of a time getting it to work, and so I was in a mad dash looking for my scan converter, which I never found. But I did find this machine, and I'm just elated because not only is this one of the uh, most iconic Macintosh styles of all time, because you, you get somebody who's never even used a Macintosh, and you show this to them, and they know what this is. They know that this is an Apple computer. This is not an original Macintosh classic. It is, in fact, an SE30. And as this thing was found at work, I powered it on, and most of the time it wouldn't even come on. It just made sad little irk noises and refused to power up. So as something that can only be described as a labor of love, I brought it back from the dead. I resoldered the entire analog board, although back then I did not exactly have wonderful soldering equipment. And judging by the fact that this machine is behaving in something of an eccentric manner tonight, the disk drive seems to be out of alignment, the screen has lost deflection a few times now, and it's had a couple of odd crashes. I think the analog board, which is basically the power supply and CRT deflection circuitry in this machine, needs to be gone over again, and perhaps with a little more proper equipment and some better soldering knowledge. But there's nothing really special about this machine per se. It's been used a lot since it was manufactured in August of 1991. It was made in Ireland by Apple Computer. And like I said, it's spent a lot of time turned on. So the little CRT is pretty worn and the focus gets kind of soft when you crank the brightness up. The focus is kind of soft on it anyway. But one of the things that I want to show you on this machine, I think this is the last surviving copy I have and I need to get it off of here because I want to preserve this program because I've never seen it before. Another thing that I picked up at the same time I picked up this computer was a whole bunch of antique Macintosh software for the classic Mac OS, which is sitting in those three diskette organizers right there. One of the disks that was in there that unfortunately did get lost to the flood contained something very cool. Like I say, I've never seen another one of these. You can see it right there. Some of you will recognize that logo right away. It says Buick Dimensions for 1990, and it is an interactive, online, computer-based Buick product catalog and information center, and I actually want to give you a quick tour of this. Now, the interesting thing is, although this program was for the 1990 model year, and I'm pretty sure there were color Macintoshes available by 1990. In fact, I'm very sure of that. Someone will no doubt correct me if I'm wrong. This program does not run properly on a color Macintosh. Oh, it runs, and you can use it. But everything looks very strange. Instead of using shades of gray, they actually used lighter and darker colors. So everything looks very strange 
on a machine that is running a much later version of the Mac OS, and it runs just fine on Mac OS 9.2.2. And the colors, the colors are very odd, like there's hot pinks and light blues and things like that. So let's go ahead and run this program, and hopefully this machine will cooperate long enough that I can give you a pretty decent demonstration of how cool this program really is. I'm sure that some of you Buick fans out there will love to see this, and if there is any way I can get this thing off of here, and I'm sure that I can, even if I have to pull the hard drive, I will preserve this program and make it available somehow for those who are interested in having it. So let's go ahead and get started here in just a moment. All right, I'm going to go ahead and start the program now by double-clicking on it. A little bit of fireworks there. You'll notice the mouse cursor. There's a neat Buick Tri-Shield in places. Now this program was originally developed Copyright 1989, General Motors Corporation, and it was originally developed by the Inmar Group at 4241 Woodcock Drive, Suite A-125 in San Antonio, Texas. So we'll go ahead and hit the Continue button here. And it starts over again. You have a couple of options here. The Great American Showroom, featuring standard equipment, options, pricing, technical data, comparisons, leasing information. You can even print a window sticker. Technology in motion, informative animations of today's technology from Buick. Hit the road, tour the continental U.S. with this unique road atlas. And the 1990 Buick Challenge, how well do you know the Great American Road? Select a checkbox to continue. Clicking the Buick icon will return you to this menu. Help is available under the Apple menu. So let's go ahead, take the first option, look at that lovely LeSabre Electra or Park Avenue that's sitting down there. Notice the tri-shield cursor again. There's a pretty unusual Buick. Now the cars actually change on some of the screens. I guess that's a LeSabre on the front page. You can go ahead and view information about the Riata, which was their sporty little convertible car, as well as a coupe, it says here. Available as a coupe, and in the spring as a convertible as well, Riata belongs to a very exclusive, very special class of automobiles, the luxury two-seater. Nearly every convenience and luxury you can think of is already there in the Riata. From remote keyless entry system with automatic door locks, a passkey security system, an, electronic -tuned, an electronically tuned radio, premium sound system featuring Sequam AM stereo with a star next to it, and six concert sound speakers, a supplemental inflatable restraint system, an airbag, for the driver only, anti-lock brakes, and a 3800 sequential fuel injection power plant boasting 165 horsepower. So much, in fact, that its only options are a sliding Astro roof, a 16-way power driver's seat, and a CD player. I'd love to know if the CD player, if that, was, if that particular radio was capable of decoding AM stereo broadcasts. Riata can stand proudly at the head of its class of high-quality, limited-production luxury two-seaters. Not, not just in luxury and performance, but in value. And it says right here with the star, receive CQAM, registered trademark, AM stereo broadcasts. Most AM stations across the country broadcast in CQAM, but some do not. Check with your local stations for compatibility in your area. And there it says, use the models menu above to view other 1990 Buicks. I'm not going to go ahead and read all the rest of these screens to you because it would take an obscene amount of time, so if you want to read them, go ahead and pause the video at any point where I run the scroll bar up or down. Choose the next information. We can view information about the standard equipment that is on the Riata. A list of all the options on the convertible and coupe models alike. You can go back. You'll notice that it remembers where we've been. Talks about available options.
technical information as well as its base price at the time. It was a $30,000 car as it's built here. A pricing spreadsheet to calculate your trade-in allowance, your down payment, and your option packages. There's a lease disclosures button down here which probably contains fine print. And if you chose to do so, you could actually print this screen and presumably take it to your dealer. And then competitive comparisons compares it to a couple other of its uh, contemporaries at the time such as the Toyota Super Coupe, the Chrysler Maserati Coupe, and the BMW 325i. As you can see, the Riata was definitely not the cheapest option of any of them. And then it goes on to tell you all about the dimensions of the car. As well as the estimated city and highway fuel economy. So if we go back to the front page, we can pick a different car and choose the station wagons. Apparently they didn't offer the AM stereo radio on this one, or at least they don't talk about it if they did. Again, you can see standard equipment, option packages, technical information, a pricing spreadsheet, and competitive comparisons. Electra Park Avenue for your large luxury car. Then you can look at the equipment for that particular car. The Riviera, much the same thing. The Skylark. and the LeSabre. The artwork in this program is actually quite nice. I don't know that we're in the era of shrinking cars anymore, but it certainly seems everything on the road these days almost looks like some kind of a Toyota or another.
I like the CD disc player notation there. Apparently it's a compact disc disc player. And finally in the catalog, the good old Buick Century. Go back to the intro page, a little sound to play again. Technology in motion is a little more fun to look at because it actually shows you some of how the uh, various things work in the car of lo along with illustrations. Yes, that animation repeats forever. Goes on to talk about the inflation unit and the sensors as well as the method of operation. The legendary 3800 V6 engine. I love this particular demonstration. can of course click these buttons to see yet more interesting demonstrations. Notice that's the same noise the airbag makes. says electronic climate control. <laughs> I think I would get tired of listening to that after a while.
Dual Zone Heater. No thieves, apparently. Typo there. Those are all the technology features. Hit the road, tour the continental US with this interactive atlas. Probably won't go into that right now. And then you can play this little game right here entitled the 1990 Buick Challenge. I don't have a keyboard attached to the machines. So I can't actually enter a name. But there you can read about it. And so that's a quick little overview, overview of the Buick Dimensions 1990 computer program for classic Macintoshes. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video if you're into Buicks. If you didn't, well I guess that's too bad. Maybe you'll like my next video better. Do feel free to leave a comment. Like I say, I'm going to try to make this program available for those of you who have a classic Macintosh. This will also run in the classic environment the last I knew if you have a machine that'll do that. So there you have it for right now.